statistical tables for the normal distribution. And uh, I want to call your mind back to what we've been doing just the last couple of days. This is the normal distribution, the bell curve. Right? We're pretty familiar with it now. It is a phenomenally useful model because it, it sort of represents the probability density function of pretty much everything, bless you, pretty much everything that is the result of a lot of independent processes. So we talked about all these examples before, things like heights, temperatures, um, wherever you're measuring a bunch of things, and there's gonna be minor variations, maybe just because of you know, genetics or because of just like errors in measurement, um, you get the normal distribution. So it is really, really useful, okay? We then said, once you get this guy, if you want to work out probabilities underneath this, you have to integrate, right? You're like that's, that's, where we, that's how we use the probability density function. Areas under curves give us probability. And then we landed on this problem, right? We looked at this function and we were like, gross, don't want to integrate it. So I told you right at the outset there were three ways to solve this problem. And they all started with T. The first one was? Uh, we, uh, so, so in fact, in, so, in some ways the order doesn't matter, but the first one I said was technology, okay, and I will use that as my reminder that if you go and have a look at the topic 14 page where you got the booklet um, that we've been using, this topic, um, hopefully you've at least looked at it once, but maybe it looks different from the last time you saw it. Um, these are all the kinds of things which I've been referring to during our lessons. Grab a seat, Eddie. Um, but haven't had the time necessarily to teach in class. In particular, just have a look at this one right down the bottom. This is, um, as Alicia said, this is using technology to solve that integral. So go ahead, have a look at that. Um, we also said, and we did this yesterday, we did it by hand. There was another T method that we could use. What was that called? Trapezoidal, thank you very much. So we had to call our minds back to integral calculus and that way of approximating areas under curves. And that leads us to the third and final one, which is statistical tables. Now, basically, the reason why we have these is the following. For trapezoidal rule and for technology, if you're on the normal distribution, you're always dealing with this same shape. You're always dealing with this same function. So you're, like, you're going to write like 50 integrals in a row, and they're all that function. People are like, hold on, we don't need to integrate this over and over again. I keep on using these same numbers. Why don't I tabulate these numbers? And then I can work these out without having you know, all the fancy software and that kind of thing that I would need to evaluate the integral directly. Now, it is still approximate because these tables, um, as you're going to see, don't have infinite you know, numbers of values in them, but they are close enough for us to use. So at this point, what I want you to do is to open up the booklet and um, the page number is page 50. And you're going to see a table here. It says table one, area under standard normal density. Okay, so I hope you can see it right there. I'll make it a little bit bigger for you, okay? So, what are we looking at? Um, what do all these numbers mean? Essentially, if you know a particular Z score, you can work out a probability that goes with that like a cumulative distribution function would tell you. So um, let's pick a z-score. For example, uh, this is page 50. Page 50. Okay. Um, you can see down the left-hand column, um, this is almost like a stem and leaf plot, but in two dimensions. So on the left-hand column, uh, just, just over here, right, um, you might want to say, oh, I want to have a z-score of like 1.6. See that? 1.6 there. And I can get more accuracy by saying 1.6 what? Give me a number, guys. Give me another decimal place. 1.64 was the clearest one that I heard. So I say, if I'm on the 1.6 row, which is across here, right, all of these values correspond to um, different decimal places after the 0.6, right? So, um, Alicia, I think you said 0.64. So you can see up the top there, it's 0 0.04. So now what I do is, I'll use another color now. I go down to this... Uh, 0.04 column, and you can see there's a number that intersects between the two of them. 0 0.4495. Do you see that? So what does that mean? Um, on your uh, graph of a normal distribution, and if you haven't got one, just draw a rough one for yourself right now, just like I have. Okay. What this 0.4495 actually represents is, like the uh, title says, it's an area underneath this curve. But what area is it? 
Now when we look at cumulative distribution functions, right? The whole cumulative idea is you start from whatever your lowest score is, and then you count up to whatever score you happen to be interested in. Does that make sense? That's the whole accumulating idea. Okay. So I said that these numbers are like a cumulative distribution function. They start from zero and they count up to whatever z score you just provided. So we set a z score of oops, sorry. 1.64, I think, was the number that we came up with. Okay? Now, if I go to my normal distribution and I say I should be able to fit three standard deviations away from the mean. So I'm going to go one, two, three, uh, one, two, three in the opposite direction. So these will be z1, 2, and 3, and z negative 1, negative 2, negative 3 as you go to the left. Okay? So where's 1.64? 1.64, um, if this is 1 and 2, it's between 1 and 2, right? So I'm just going to draw a line in there. Let's pick a, a easier to see half. Yeah, a bit, a bit past halfway. I'm going to call it around there, OK? So the number that we just found by reading off the table, 0 0.4495, like I said, you start from 0, and then you go forward to whatever z score you just said. So, so that would be this. This is the area that I'm after. Does this make sense? So I just, I just picked out a number, 1.6. I asked you guys to give me a number, actually, and that was the number that we together ended up with. Okay, I could pick any other number on here. There's a lot of different numbers that I could choose from, but I just wanted one to start with. Okay? Now, the uh, one difference, I said it's like a cumulative distribution function, but it's not exactly the same because a cumulative distribution function starts from the very beginning. If this is a normal distribution, where's zero? I mean, you can see it. It's not at the beginning. Where is it? It's, it's in the middle at the mean, at mu, right? So that's slightly different. Um, and it's why if you go to the top left of, and I hope, you, have you got the table in front of you now? Because mine's a bit small, I know you'll need to read it yourself. Have a look at the very first value you can see in the top left hand corner. It's a z score of zero. So you're like, oh, if I start at zero, which is in the middle, and then I go to zero, you can see that there is uh, no area underneath that curve, right? Don't go to it just yet. Just think about it for a second. As you put in larger and larger values of z, 1, 2, 3, what value should I be tending towards? What's the biggest value I'm going to get? Now think very carefully. Remember, and you can see it on this graph, I start from the middle, right? So if you start from the middle and you start going to the right, you're going to go to 0 0.5. Do you agree? It's only half of it, right? Which is why, if you have a look at the entire table, right, have a look at the bottom right hand corner. You see that's, um, what's that correspond to? A z-score of 3.99. Do you see that? So 3.99, that's a very high z-score. What is the area under the curve? It's 0 0.4999. There are obviously more nines that go after that, but there's a limit to the amount of information we can fit on the table. Does that make sense? Can you see how we read this? Question. Oh, it's page 50. Okay, I was really confused. We had like completely different numbers. Ah, okay. Now, it's, um, it's worth mentioning, this is actually, I'm glad you picked this up. You might notice on this page, if you're on the correct page, it says table one at the top, right? There is actually, in fact, there are many different kinds of tables. And the way you use it, well, it depends on what kind of table it is. This lesson, we're really just going to use table one. I think it's the most useful one, okay? So, now that you basically know how to use this thing, let's, let's do some examples and let's explore. Okay? So maybe you want to jot this down. Uh, what we're going to do first up is to use this table to try and evaluate this probability. Okay? If you're on a normal distribution and you want to know the probability of you know, getting a z-score, if I randomly select someone in this group, I want to know the probability of getting a z-score between 0 and 1.23. Again, I just picked that, that value out at random. Okay? So how do I use the table to help me here? What's the heading today, Sarang? Make the heading and I'll answer the question for you. Okay? How are we going to find this? Well, um, I want to start from zero and that's exactly what this table does. right? And then I want to go up to 1.23. 1.23. So 1.2, I'm going to have to read on the left-hand column. Can you see there? 1.2. Can you see where it is? I'm spotting it about... I'm going to get rid of actually all of this other stuff. I spot it 1.2 as there. So that's the row that I'm interested in. Are you following so far? 1.2? 
Yeah. Okay, so if I wanted 1.28, you can see this table, right? This table, it goes to two decimal places if you include the rows and the columns. That's why I'm going up to the columns now. You can see if I wanted 1.28, I'd go over to, I need to go a bit further, there's the 0 0.08. Yeah, okay, so you've got to look closely. Um, I wanted 1.23, didn't I? Okay, so hopefully you can read up to the correct column. And there's the number that I want that intersects with both of them. What is it? 3907. Yeah, 3907. So this is, uh, sorry, excuse me. This is 0 0.3907. Okay? That's the whole answer, right? I suppose I could say, oh, it's 39.07%. That would be the same, but I haven't asked you to give the answer in decimal percentage. It's all fine. Just before we go on, do a quick sense check. 3907. Does that feel like it should be about right? Yeah. It does, right? We know it's got to be less than 0.5. We know it's most of the way, though. Like you can see, it includes the tallest part of the graph. So that's why it's got a lot of, I mean, you know, point, it's close to 0.4, so it's, it's most of the way towards 0.5. Are you with me?